Well, welcome everybody to the wrap up of day one of the boff and hacking sessions of Academy. Uh, it's Monday, September 9th, 2019, and we've got a whole bunch of boffs to get through. And the first one I would like to call up is the Maui boff. Is Camilo here? One of the Night Trucks people? Maui has mysteriously vanished. Darn. Yeah, Marco's going to do a little bit on Maui. Come on up. Speak into the mic, he'll be recorded, but you, no one else can hear you. Okay, so I, I arrived uh, not at the beginning, so I, I don't know all of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, there was a bit of a discussion on uh, uh, where to... Uh, where to put Maui, how to to position it. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I don't really remember. Um, uh, 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 yeah, but, but Maui, um, uh, the Nitrox part was, uh, uh, was more on their plans on Plasma Mobile, if uh, they may want to have... Uh, uh, some slightly different user experience with maybe a, a different home screen. Uh, we have infrastructure for f uh, for that. We also uh, discussed if uh, uh, if there was some some things that can be improved in the in the in the collaboration. So. Uh, that it feels a bit less of a of a different thing. So. Uh, uh, depending how how things will evolve, they may they may start to work on the uh, one plasma UI upstream plasma UI directly, or or maybe wanting just some uh, 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 some uh, some uh, little customizations. Another another things for Maui was uh, since they. Uh, they value a lot having the application on Android, uh, but they are still not on our Android CI. So uh, exactly, uh, they they reached to the conclusion that uh, they should uh, they should get to into our Android CI. So uh, exactly what what they need to to do on their part to have them just work there. So they. They will be at the Android buff. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Marco. <laughs> and in the afternoon, they moved on to the GitLab. <laughs> GitLab buff. So I'd like to hand it off to Ray. Thank you. Uh, so I think we had a pretty good uh, session. I counted about 35, 40 people in the room. Uh, talk. Uh, briefly about our community product uh, and Alessia who's who I mean both Alessia and Jacopo had to go back and catch our trains uh, I think we appreciate a lot of uh, questions especially when Alessia was going through the workflow of uh, committing code doing reviews uh, relating them to issues uh, appreciate your questions I mean there are I mean a couple of pain points that you that we go through as well like Selecting range a range of lines, like when you're commenting on something, that's something that yeah we're familiar with. Uh, good question about federated user profile. We'll definitely have to check on that. But if I miss anything big, uh, let me know. And then Jacopo kind of finish it off with uh, his experience contributing to GitLab as a community member, and hopefully we'll see some of that as you guys continue to kick tires. Uh, but I think that's about it. Thank you, Ray. And rounding off the day in that particular room was the HIG and Kirigami documentation. Fabian Rietmeier. And okay. So uh, we uh, did a short presentation of the human interface guidelines and uh, talked about uh, problems with using them. And then uh, we had uh, quite a longer discussion about the Kirigami documentation. Yeah, so um, 
We uh, we do have uh, right now the API docs of Kirigami, uh, which is uh, which is awesome. Even though um, the presentation of those docs will have to improve, but this is another set of problems. Uh, what we want to also have is uh, a different website, which is do developer documentation, uh, more high level compared to API docs. So uh, with uh, uh, many tutorials and explaining many concepts um, which are more about the interaction of the various parts rather than uh, the documentation of one class. And we will try to do that and see if, if it can be used as, a, as an example for other KD projects or if it's a, a good idea altogether or not. Uh, we have uh, uh, some volunteers to work on some uh, parts of this uh, website. Um, we will. Uh, uh, we have a mailing list that we never really used, so we will uh, take uh, the mailing list as a kind of repurposite as the uh, central point to where to coordinate the work on uh, documentation writing, and see how how this will go, and yeah, hopefully to make it way more useful for new people. Thank you, Hig folks. Uh, moving on to the next room, we've got in U102, we had promo stuff all morning by Ivana and Paul. Paul's here. Hello. Okay, so we started off by looking at the state of promo, uh, where we had advanced, and uh, we found that uh, uh, nearly all our figures were up, except for in something like the dot and we were wondering why that was like that so we are thinking of maybe giving it a new look and try and see what sort of topics we can make uh, we can publish there to attract more traffic to that we're finding that the headlines of the dot do uh, raise interest on social media but people are not clicking on them to go to the site so we thought of several strategies we could try to to increase uh, traffic to the dot. Uh, then we talked about announcements and we know that for example the last one for apps 19.8, 19.08 there were some people that were not were not happy with it. We had uh, some our reasons to do that and we th we think that we probably didn't communicate them so we're going to think we're going to think of ways of uh, we're going to think of ways, no we thought of ways of communicating with the developers better and so that they could submit there, we could have a two-way uh, feedback so that we could uh, use their input for to make the announcements better and they could use our input so that they know what sort of information we need to uh, ensure that they, that they are fairly represented in the announcements. Then we talked about KD.org, uh, the website, which is... Um, is, uh, we found several problems with the website, with the landing page of the website, and uh, we talked about possible redesigns that could be used to make it more visitor friendly uh, and to do some, uh, to get users to actually get to what they're looking for when they go to kd.org. Um, Carl Schwann will ha be having a boff about this tomorrow. And we, uh, Promo, uh, forwarded some ideas and uh, he's going to talk with developers tomorrow and from those two things we will come up with a design that will make that better. That's it. Thank you, KDE Promo. Um, moving on to the next room. How many Davids have we got here right now? One. Oh, Dave. Okay, several Davids hosted a KF6 planning meeting. So, one David. 
Right, so we, we had a, a session about uh, Framework 6 and the relation to Qt6, and we discussed a number of topics. One of them was um, when do we actually branch out uh, KF6 and start uh, using Qt6. Uh, it's actually too early for that. Uh, it's going to be, you know, maybe another six months. We want to uh, use the, maybe when the first Qt6 Q alpha is out, then we can start doing that. But before that, we still have a lot of work, so we discussed a number of um, things that are, that should be investigated or done and actually uh, so we have a new board on Fabricator it's empty right now but we will fill it with the, the it's not empty anymore oh it was empty for a long time but now it's not cool um, and then the the work of actually figuring out all of the cleanups that have to be done that is quite some work in itself and we thought maybe we need to do an actual sprint for that uh, possibly early December um, so that because that's basically what we did at Randa uh, in 11, that was quite some years ago, for, um, for, uh, for Frameworks 5, and that, that has led to a, a number of very interesting results, so we would like to re, uh, redo that another time. And then um, the, once, once we start branching out um, 6, the idea is that um, when, when we start releasing Framework 6, then we will still have a kind of a stable branch for Frameworks 5 so that we can still do um, less frequent, but still some releases of Framework 5 in parallel, maybe every three months or four, or whenever there are security issues or whatever. So we managed to avoid branches until, until now, but at that point we will actually have to have branches. Uh, yeah, and then we discuss a number of you know specific issues. What do we want to get rid of? Uh, how do we make a support library? These kind of things, but that needs more investigation. There was only a single Dan involved in the next boff. And it's delegated. Yeah, there, there was an unfortunate K alarm accident for Dan, so that ended up with me. Um, yeah, we in the uh, PIM boff, we discussed uh, various topics that are currently relevant in, in that area. Uh, the first one is uh, finalizing the move of K-Context and K-Calendar Core to frameworks. That should hopefully be executed within the next week. So the October release of frameworks will have those two included. Um, then we discussed what to move uh, next to frameworks, uh, mainly driven by uh, requests from the Plasma Mobile team. And it looks like the, the next one to look into is the um, DAF protocol implementation uh, necessary for CalDAF and CardDAF. Um, uh, then we looked into um, removing some of the pain due to external users depending on internal API. Um, and that seems to be in a large extent to, due to address book access uh, and the way forward there seems to be that we port those to KPeople, which is the abstraction for that, independent of Akonadi. Um, and then we discussed uh, creating something similar like K-People for Calendar, um, again driven by, uh, by Plasma Mobile and, and Bushan uh, specifically, and I just heard that Nico is already implementing this. Um, that could, for example, replace the very ad hoc integration that we have for the Plasma um, Calendar applet and have that on a, on a cleaner and better way to access actual calendaring data. Um, and um, yeah, in general, we, we discussed on how to get the Plasma Mobile PIM team and the Dinosaur PIM team closer together and then um, collaborate better. Um, we discussed on how to get uh, Sunshine into the application release. Um, that is waiting for Kevin to finish the current release, and then we'll hopefully be able to integrate that. Um, oh yeah, and finally, um, following the KF6 discussion, uh, one part that we need to look into is um, the heavy use of cross in the account wizard, which led to a discussion on how to generally redesign the whole account handling in Kmail uh, and making more use of the work that uh, is ongoing, that has already been done in, in K accounts and how to bring all of that together. Um, yeah, I think that's it.
Thank you, dinosaurs. Um, moving on to the next room, U207 had a release team meeting. I'd like to call on Albert to talk about the releases. Yep, so we talked a bit uh, about the pain points we are having with the KDE applications releases. Uh, David uh, mentioned that he has already fixed some of those for the frameworks releases, so we're going to uh, steal that from him. There's also some pain points related to how we update, uh, upload uh, applications to uh, FlatHub. Uh, Alesh has some ideas we might want to implement, so there's uh, work on that. Uh, nobody from the Plasma team show up, so I don't know if they have problems or not, but uh, there might be a Plasma uh, buff at some point where that will be discussed. Uh, yeah, and that's basically it. We forgot to make the took notes, so don't do that. When you start above, start uh, decide that we, who will take notes. You will ha you won't have the problem I'm having right now of not remembering what we talked about. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Or maybe you could delegate. That works too. Uh, moving on to the next room, Snapcraft and Snaps was run by Harold. And maybe John wants to talk about it. John is in hiding. But it was actually run by Igor, who is, I guess, not here. So he's really in hiding. Uh, and he gave an introduction to uh, packaging stuff with Snaps and uh, how they work and how you make your programs with them and how they install and then I sat down with them for a couple of hours to go over some problems and found many problems and, and maybe fix them. Let's see if I can get Harold to show up for this one. Open QA for KDE. <laughs> Kai is not going to talk about it. Um, so once again, we talked about OpenQA just like last year. The result is exactly the same as last year. We want to use it more, and we are not quite sure how. Uh, we looked a bit about, uh, at what we already have, and it's not good enough. So we wanted to make to so we want to make it better, but the road there is a bit unclear. What we certainly want to have is more tests and more comprehensive tests, but yeah, there's some foundational things that are still not in place to actually enable making tests or creating tests easily, so that's a bit of a blocker. Yeah. Thanks, Harald. Mamarok. Well, you wrote it you're on, on the wiki yourself. Next time, delegate writing the wiki entry on users on user support. Okay. Um, oh yes. Okay. Um, we did actually gather people from all kind of uh, corners of KDE who are closely or largely related to user support. Be this documentation, be this wiki, be this sysadmin, etc. Uh, we did a short state of the user support, being aware that there are channels where we get user support questions in which are simply not handleable because they don't even provide a chronological order like Facebook or Twitter, who, who tend to mix up everything. There is a similar problem on Reddit where user can just vote up or down valuable inter uh, interesting stuff um, and replace it with junk. So those are not platforms really suitable for. We have the forum, we have IRC, we have the mailing lists. All of those have their advantages, but of course also their downsides. And ideally we would want to have a better suited medium that can eventually replace the forums. The problem is, for example, for all the multimedia applications who are the biggest applications in, in KDE, like Krita, KDE and Live Digicam, who use the forum as a user support very extensively, but are limited by its capabilities of using um, images and, and media files. 
So uh, the other thing is that if we are working on new channels of user support, sysadmin must be on board because they will have to implement it and we don't want to overload their work. Um, Jonathan came up with the suggestion to use this course, which looks very promising, especially when it comes to using uh, screenshots. Um, we will have to talk to this course people because there are some features we would need, like for example, the um, categorization of entries, else we will end up with endless lists of, of, of applications and uh, if we can't class them in categories as we do currently in the forums, this will be not really easy access for users. Um, um, ben also mentioned that currently this course needs Docker and this might eventually not be the best solution, but this might eventually also something for the sysadmin both on Wednesday to talk about. I, I'm not, it's not my speciality. Um, we want to avoid that people go ask questions in mailing lists which are not meant for. We get regular German questions asking in KDE Docs Eng, which is meant for English documentation writing. No idea how they come up with that mailing list. We get user support questions on the wiki. I mean, if we miss these questions, it's not really a surprise because nobody looks at that. The discussion feature in the wiki is not meant for user support. So ideally, we would like to have a better suited user support for the users, easier to find. But there is also a necessity from the projects to really take care of user support. We want to make it easier for them. The problem currently we have on the forum is when you don't immediately answer a question, you will not get the updates because somehow this doesn't work. And you get updates, but only there has been a question but no mention of the content of it or the content of the discussion, which is not necessarily something you want to look at when you are developing. But we came to the conclusion that we need to make it better, but we need to also have all the projects contributing because a project which has users need to take them seriously because the day you don't, we stop taking care of users we will lose them, and the project with no users can close shop. Thank you. A project with no users can close up shop, but it's a good thing that we have goals to guide our future. And Lydia is going to talk about the WAF she ran. Yes, we talked about the goals. Um, and we did three things. The first thing was looking back at the um, previous goals and what we learned from them, what um, we can improve. For example, one thing that we can improve is making it clearer what um, kind of tasks can be picked up um, for each of the goals. And then in the second part, we looked at the new goals and what um, kind of immediate next steps can be done there. Uh, one of the things we identified is a landing page that leads people to the places where uh, more information about each of them can be found as well as um, for the previous goals. And the third thing we talked about is that with the new one, new goals being voted in, that does not mean that the work on the old goals stops, but quite the opposite, they're still very much um, at the center of uh, what we do, right? They, they are just um, integrated in everything we do now, and we can shift focus a bit. Yeah, thank you. And rounding out the day in U208A was a rather sleepy boff on Neon for everyone. John, do you want to talk about Neon anymore? We, there were not fireworks, there was just some sleepy people discussing some issues with this neon. 
uh, most of which can be resolved by updating to a new version of Qt, which is handy because there's a new version of Qt out that we want to update to, um, and uh, installing packages that for sort of external various proprietary things that people have problems with and looking at that. Um, and while there's all workarounds, the user experience is not necessarily great and it's worth, worth us working out how to make that great. And for everyone who was awake during lunch hour, there was the KDE EVAGM. That's a traditional thing on the Monday, and Frederick is going to tell us all about it. Yeah, so some participated. I don't want to talk much about it. We uh, actually saw that business in the last year was uh, conducted in a good fashion, so the board was relieved, which is awesome. And we had election of two new board members. Uh, where are you guys? Neophytos and eight. Congratulations. I think. Thank you very much. Um, that wraps up the first day of. Is it, does anyone feel slighted or missed? Did anyone do anything interesting they want to talk about right now? If not, then I wish you all a pleasant evening.